So today I want to talk about Texas's electric grid and this summer's heat. For those of you who may not know or remember, during the winter of 2021, Texas's electric grid utterly failed. For several days during February of that year, massive power outages caused by extreme cold and poorly designed infrastructure shut the state of Texas down and needlessly caused the deaths of up to 700 people. Due to Texas's deregulated market, Texas ignored its own history of frigid temperatures in 2011 and continued to use infrastructure that was not winterized, despite federal regulators warning that the grid was bound to fail for years. Since then, little has been done to address these issues, and Texas remains an independent grid separate from the eastern and western electric grids in the United States. And thus, Texas's grid is unable to borrow large quantities of power from the rest of the country. Which brings us to this summer, where record-breaking temperatures have been happening across the southern and southwestern United States, and now Texas's power grid is on the verge of failing again, this time right in the middle of a heat wave. So let's talk a little bit about what's happening and how Texas is responding. So we have here that Texas has had temperatures with heat indexes soaring well above 100 degrees Fahrenheit in many parts of the state. Uh, most of the state is also experiencing temperatures well above that uh, as of this week. Now the Electric Reliability Council of Texas or ERCOT told residents that they needed to turn down their air conditioning by at least one degree Fahrenheit and asked consumers to avoid running appliances between 2 p.m. and 8 p.m. to prepare for a reserve capacity shortage. According to ERCOT, the state faces a quote, potential reserve capacity shortage with no market solution available. Now, I want to emphasize that there is no market solution here because part of the reason that Texas is praised by a lot of right-wing free market types is that it's supposed to provide options that are not available in other places. But oftentimes what that means is cutting back on the necessary components of infrastructure to quote, lower costs. And the fact remains that because their grid is cut off from the rest of the country, they can't even buy electricity from other parts of the country. So unless they are able to somehow produce more electricity themselves, they have no solution available to the very thing that a lot of people tout as the main reason why Texas's grid is supposed to be good. The market is not working here. Uh, and that really doesn't come as a surprise, to be honest. The news comes as Texas set um, more than a dozen new heat records on Sunday, with temperatures in parts of the state soaring as high as 113 degrees Fahrenheit. And we can actually see some maps here where there's record-breaking temperatures occurring everywhere. Uh, for example, the second hottest July day since 1950 for Ericot. Uh, Texas uh, has these really high temperatures right now that are absurd. Um, where you have the hottest calendar day on record in College Station and the second hottest in Houston. So this is what they're dealing with in Texas in terms of temperatures. So by necessity, air conditioning and being able to cool oneself is literally a necessity. Like there's no way around it. Now, when it comes to why this is going to break down and why the power plants there can't handle it, as searing Texas heat drives power demand to record highs, the state's grid operator is ordering plants to run at a historic pace, often forcing them to put off maintenance to keep cranking out electricity. That's not a good look. You have to be running regular maintenance on these plants. That's helped keep the lights on for now, but the short-term focus is putting even more stress on a system that's already stretched near its limit. So we know that there are growing concerns over how long these power plants can maintain the grueling pace as they run nonstop, according to Michelle uh, Richmond, Executive Director of Texas uh, Competitive Power Advocates, a generator industry group. Things are going to break, she said. We have an aging fleet that's been run harder than it's ever been run. When you have somebody in that position, flat out saying things are going to break, people should be listening. 
And the fact remains that in a lot of these cases, like with right now, it might actually be too late for people to listen. We should have seen this way ahead of time. Things should have been responded to in 2021 when we saw 700 people die from the frigid temperatures. This Texas grid is not holding up to any sort of actual um, need of people, and it's consistently failing at this point. To meet the surge in power demand, ERCOT, the grid operator, is leaning heavily on a mechanism called reliability unit commitments to ensure there's enough supply. Plants are being regularly ordered to go into service or remain in operation and skip any scheduled maintenances. The measure also overrides shutdowns for economic factors or any other issues. And ERCOT is using the rule more than ever before as the state battles bout after bout of extreme weather. Here's the thing, these power plants can actually run for a period of time, even with a leak in them. So water can be actually leaking out of the systems that are used to cool the plants down, and you can still run the facilities fairly well. However, if you keep consistently doing this and repairs are not made, you're eventually going to cause massive damage. And what I feel like we're really setting up for in these instances is that they're keeping the power on now, but when the actual damage is done, when these facilities can no longer run, they are going to shut down for extended periods of time. And more than likely, they're not gonna be able to keep up. And as the uh, power shuts down, you're gonna see rolling blackout after rolling blackout because these plants are not gonna be able to stay online. The problem is that deferring power now, as I just mentioned, will likely come back to haunt the power plant owners. If you put off preventative maintenance because it's needed uh, for reliability, it increases the chance you'll need a more uh, and have a more comprehensive outage later as the plants start to malfunction. So what exactly is causing all this draw besides the heat? Well, you're also seeing a population boom in Texas, as a lot of people from California have moved there. You also have immigration coming in from the south. Um, you also have a lot of people doing crypto mining, which is uh, taking a lot of that electricity that is needed to keep people cool and is using it to generate cryptocurrency. Meanwhile, the climate has more and more cases of extreme weather events that are driving up electricity costs and are making these situations even more severe. Uh, the fact remains that when we see more and more of these extreme weather events, it's more likely that we'll see infrastructure damaged as well. Uh, we don't know how that's going to affect wind turbines, especially if uh, winds shift or anything like that happens. We're going to see this grid fail is the point. And it's creating situations like the uh, deadly February 2021 freeze that caused blackouts across the state. Now, but climate change also is doing something else that is important to keep in mind. It's actually shortening the span of time they have to create tune-ups and to perform maintenance on these power plants. As we see here, climate change means these windows of temperate weather are actually getting shorter. This year, for instance, an early May heat wave forced some generators to skip their tune-ups, and periods of high heat are also lasting longer, which is going to put more stress on power plants that are running all out for weeks at a time. So normally what would happen is during the uh, winter time, um, you'd be able to, or rather the uh, fall and spring time, you'd be able to keep the plants kind of at a low level so that it's at full power for the summers and winter where you're getting the most extreme temperatures. But because we're getting extreme weather events of frigid air into the early spring and high temperatures into late spring, you're seeing a lot of circumstances where these plants do not have the opportunity to shut down. And again, you keep running these things over and over again consistently, and eventually they're going to break. And if they break without adding more uh, power plants into this aging fleet, if we don't see more plants built, if we don't start seeing renewable energy sources put in Texas to replace some of these very old 50-year-old coal plants and 30-year-old natural gas plants, which again are the ones who failed during the uh, February storm in 2021, you're going to see 
more and more electricity loss in these areas. And the side effect is going to be loss of life. You have to remember that when you have temperatures into the 100, 110, 120 degree Fahrenheit range, especially as droughts are happening across the country due to climate change, people are going to struggle to cool themselves. They are going to need more water. Droughts are going to make water less accessible. And that's going to lead to people dying and a lot of harm happening to people. I wouldn't be surprised if heat stroke is on the rise in these areas, especially if these rolling blackouts actually do start to manifest. So with that said, these situations, as I've mentioned, are only going to get worse as climate change makes these extreme weather events all the more common. Running on old infrastructure to these levels is going to inevitably lead to failures. And as previously mentioned, there's no market solution to these problems. In addition to everything that I mentioned before, nobody's really incentivized to fix this in a deregulated market until it's far too late. And this is exactly what's happening right now. They waited too long to even start addressing these issues. And just like what happened in February of 2021, eventually these plants are going to fail and people are either going to be stuck in deep freezing temperatures or hot summer heat waves without power. And it will lead to people dying. There needs to be a shift in Texas's grid to regulate the industry, to actually make it so that these plants are all up to code, even if it means that people have to pay a little bit more for their electricity. It's going to mean merging with one of the two national grids, if not both of them, if that's even possible, and start building a whole lot more wind power, because otherwise these outcomes are inevitable. Texas is going to end up being one of the hottest places in the country consistently during summers. They're going to need to borrow from cooler locations. And without doing that, again, these situations will be inevitable. And as usual with all of this, it needs to be said that it will always be the most vulnerable populations that are affected the most, while the wealthy, like Ted Cruz, will run like he did in the last power crisis. And more than likely, just like last time, the massive demand during times of crisis will also lead companies to price gouge people who manage to maintain power during these disasters. The current infrastructure and deregulated market are not in the best interest of people, and something has to change in Texas and likely a lot of other places in the United States before anything can even start to get better. So with that said, if you've enjoyed what you've watched, consider liking the video, subscribing, and leaving a comment, as well as joining my Discord where we have conversations on topics like these. If you're in a financial place to do so, and only in a if you are in a financial place to do so, please do consider supporting me on Patreon, especially as political content like this can often be demonetized on YouTube. The links for everything that I mentioned are in the description down below. With that said, my name is Anarchist Terra, and I thank you for watching.